Hello everyone and welcome to day 21 of my Advent series. Well, it's nearly over. It's certainly been a marathon for me, but I hope you've enjoyed watching them. Okay, let's have a look what's in today's box. So let's flip the lid and see what we've got. Well, it's a very ugly man in a Christmas jumper talking about vacuums. See you all tomorrow. Bye for now. Hello everyone, well it's time to answer your questions in today's Advent video which is the question and answer and shout out session. I've got a little drinkette next to me in case I get a bit hoarse. I'll take a sip of it now. It is a bit gassy so there may be an unscheduled burp. But don't worry kids, it's non-alcoholic. It's ginger beer. How apt. Now, Oh, I've lost my page. I've lost the page, folks, so let's let's get on with this thing. I've had quite a few comments. I've just put in a request on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter asking for any last minute. Get off licking, Daisy. If you can hear a <laughs> noise all through the video, that's Daisy. That's not, buddy. that's not nobody else. It's just Daisy licking. Molly is here for now. I don't know if you can just quite see her there. She'll probably go when I start to say the word. Right. Yes, Molly. Okay, the first, I have, this is not in any order, so I'm just reading it as it is. So the first uh, question comes from Grumpy Man Reviews, and it's been edited. I have a question. What was your favourite vacuum in 2017? Only pick one, please. P.S. Really appreciate you making videos every day. I know how hard it is. Ooh, do you, Grumpy Man Reviews? Ooh, uh, misses. He knows how hard it is, folks. Don't be silly, Roger. Anyway, there's been already a comment. Somebody doing my work for me. Sticking his oar in, as usual, Mr. Shrink David. He'll be coming up later with a question, I expect. But Mr. Shrink David, 1982, has answered this. He says, he gets his question a lot. He doesn't have a favourite. And then Grumpy Man Reviews has replied, Shrink David, 1982, let's see what he says. Supercalifactualistic expialidocious. Mm, you weren't expecting me to say that. But let me see, let me think. You, we're just narrowing it down. I don't have, I can't answer um, my favourite vacuum of all time. But with Grumpy Man Reviews has narrowed it down to this year. And I can't remember how many I've unboxed this year. Um... Ooh, it's a tricky one. Perhaps I should have uh, researched these questions. Oh dear. I still can't, I still, I don't think I could answer it, you know. Um, I expect the favourite one, I can't tell you what it is because you've not seen it on the channel. But it's, um, it's a new in the box model from the 1970s and you haven't seen it yet. And I suppose that's my favourite this year because I didn't expect to get a new in the box one. I've wanted one of these for quite some time, but to get one that's unused was pretty special. So I'm going to say that, but obviously I can't answer you because you'll see that video in 2018. And I've got to, I'm wearing a rather fetching outfit for that one. So thank you for your question, Grumpy Man Reviews. Next question from Ollie Vac Guy. Hi Roger, what are your opinions on the new X7 from our friends at SIBO? Well, I have no friends at SIBO. I don't know if you have Ollie. I certainly don't. But anyway, Ollie must have some friends at SIBO. SIBO have nothing to do with me whatsoever. Right, but carry on. Right, what do you think of the new X7? Personally, I quite like the sharp stance, but it does look rather bulky. And do you have a dream vacuum you've yet to acquire? Kind regards, Ollie. That X7 has damaged the reputation SIBO has with me personally. It's just my personal opinion. They had to produce that model because they were forced to with the new EU regulations because their current X series didn't meet the requirements and it was mainly down to the volume of the noise, the motor makes, the decibel level. And I think there were only 81 decibels so, and now they're 80 decibels. So they've lost one decibel by adding the extra insulation. 
which they had to do legally to keep selling them in the EU. Um, and they've tweaked it. I haven't seen, I can't say, I've not had one in person. I can't compare it to um, an X, what was the ones called before that, Daisy? An X4 or an X1.1. Um, with SIBO, it's evolution rather than revolution, but they've missed an opportunity. They need to produce a brand new upright now. The Felix is knocking on and the X series, obviously, very old. So um, I'm going to reserve judgment, but I was rather, rather disappointed when I saw that for the first time. They, you know, there'll be people out there who said, oh, they've changed this, that and that. Well, to the average person, they've not changed a lot. And when I look at the rating sticker compared, you know, to the, and they're a lot more expensive as well, which is unnecessary. So when I look at the rating sticker for say the new um, X7 Eco Pet Boost or whatever it's called, compared to the previous model, tiny differences and you're paying a lot more money. So I like SIBO because they're well built and reliable, but if you want a company to produce exciting vacuum cleaners, SIBO ain't the company. Dependable, reliable, reasonable performance, not the best, but anyway, as I said, I'll get one, I expect, in 2018, when they're available um, mass market, when John Lewis get them in, um, or me, I don't think Argos will, but you know, when, when they're more widely available, prices might come down, so I'm gonna wait for that. Unless SIBO, uh, very unlikely, send me one. That is very unlikely. Right, so I hope that's, oh, sorry, Dream, <laughs> this is gonna go on for ages. What, what Dream Vacuum? I don't know, it's probably, a dream vacuum is probably one I've already owned and regretted selling. And it will be a Hoover. Oh. Yeah, that is another difficult one. Um, it would have been the U5080 Turbo Master, but now I've got the total system version. I don't really, you know, need the U5080. I expect it would be a Sensortronic total system. I think... Probably the Sensortronic Total System 400. I had one of those and obviously that went. So that's what I'm going to say for that. And I'll be putting, I'll be illustrating what I'm saying so you'll know what that is. A lot of people will know. Right, next question. Thanks for your question, Ollie. Next question from DJ Vids. Hi, Roger. My name is Devin J. I am 14. What is your opinion on how your Kirby's groom the carpet against other vacuums and have you ever heard of a vacuum brand called Filter Queen because of have two, I think that's because I have two, and they're super cool. Kirby's very good agitation in my experience, you know, they really make things bounce up and down. As far as grooming, I don't think they groom very well to be honest. I've got other vacuums, well such as Sibo uh, Felix as a better brush roll in my opinion and experience. So as far as grooming goes, um, they're not as good as some others. I say they're good at agitating, but I don't think the grooming aspect, personally, isn't as good as some. Um, yes, I have heard of Filter Queen. I do know what they look like. I'll put a picture up for people who don't. Um, no real interest at the moment in acquiring a Filter Queen vacuum, and especially not after I've been nagged for one quite a lot. But it was the same with the Kirby, wasn't I? It was, get a Kirby, get a Kirby, get a Kirby. And I got two, and that stopped. But then I've been now getting nags for a rainbow vacuum and a filter queen. Both are not very common in the UK. And um, I don't think they'd interest a lot of people. But who knows? I can't say I'll never get one. Right, oh dear. Right, let's see. Jank, I hope that's uh, pronounced correctly. Jank. Nadge is that? I don't know if that's your real name. Nadge, that sounds a bit rude. Um, what is the rarest vacuum you own? Well, I don't know because I don't know what's rare and what isn't really. Stop looking! Oh, Daisy! Ooh. The rare ones, I mean, vacuum cleaners were produced in their tens of thousands and millions in some cases. Obviously, there were exclusive models that were sold in smaller numbers. To me, the rarer ones would be like the new in the box ones. And it doesn't mean 
there wasn't a lot made of them because I have the new in the box Hoover Junior and I have a new in the box Hoover, which you'll see another Hoover 70s new in the box one. So to me, they're the rarest, not because they didn't make very many of them, but because it's rare because they are still more or less new in the box. So I'll say that. Hello, Chris E, Chris Emery. Hi, Roger. Have you been using the Kirby G5 vacuum? How many Miele uprights and canister vacuums do you currently have? Chris Emery, Glencoe, Ontario in Canada. Oh, I should have researched this because <laughs> I don't know. The G5, um, now is that my uh, diamond edition? Is that a G5? I haven't used it very much to be honest. Um, probably not since the uh, Independence Day video. But as you see, I did use that uh, Kirby tradition earlier in my advent series. I knew that drink would make me belch. I'm trying to keep it in. Um, how many Miele uprights and canisters? Well, I only have one Miele upright, which you've seen on my channel, that silver one. Um, unless you include the, the stick um, type, which I have two of. Or oh, no, I have, or do I have three? Oh, and, and the art, which is a sort of upright style. So if you're including... If you're including the sticks and the art, then say four. And the cylinders or canisters, oh crikey. Well, all the ones you've seen on my channel, however many they are, probably, and probably another 10. Oh, heck. Uh, I've got Mila Revolution. I've got Mila Cat and Dog. I don't know, let's say 10. 10, 10 to 15, I'm just guessing. There's some that you've not seen yet on my channel. Alex uh, Doherty, Alex here from Newcastle Gateshead. Which Hoover model new do you think is the most sturdy, robust and reliable? I can't comment on reliability, Alex, because, you know, I don't use vacuums like most people use vacuums. Obviously, I use a lot of different vacuums. I don't use one vacuum all the time, so I can't comment on reliability. Hoover aren't that good for reliability, the new Hoovers. They're slightly better than Vax though, but not much. Um, the most sturdy, well, if you're talking newish, I would say the Turbo Power. They still make that model, or I think it's called something else. Turbo Power, two word. I've done the Eco G version of that, and um, it had pretty good cyclonic uh, filtration. So that did feel quite a sturdy machine, but I can't say if it's going to be reliable because obviously it's hardly been used. But I'd say that's pretty sturdy. Uh, now, next question. Thanks for your question, Alex. Next question from Wally Castro. What was your first vacuum that you bought? Well, I can answer this, and I've answered this before. The first new vacuum, anyway, that I bought was a Hoover Sensotronic Total System 5 and I think that was in 1983 and it was a lot of money back then and my dad helped me to get that. So um, that was the first sort of new, brand new, but previous to that I got, I got them from jumble sales and from friends, mothers, you know, I remember getting a couple of uh, constellations, one of the American made constellations and a pink and rose white constellation I got that from a friend's mother ten pound each back in the 80s um, you know and a friend of my dad's gave me Hoover convertible so you know I don't know the very very first one to be honest but I do know the Hoover Sensotronic Total System 5 was the first sort of brand new one that started my collection obviously that's long gone mmm actually no that's what I'll have not Hoover Sensotronic System 400, I'll have that back, new in the box, to answer the previous question. Um, yes, from Ollie Back Guy, I think that would be my dream vacuum. A new in the box, Hoover Sensotronic, Total System 5, just like my first one. Yeah, that would be it. Right, have I? Oh, so that's it, uh, Wally. So that's your answer. Thanks for the question. Ratmo Gambo. Greeting, oh vacuum guru. Hayden here from South Africa. Got a Hoover Dirt Searcher. What LED bulb can you recommend for the headlamp? Would it be the same as you used 
in the 612. Well, hopefully I've answered that question for you. If you've seen the uh, dirt searcher video, I actually put that bulb in. So you want a small bayonet cap. I don't, I don't know what they're called. They're probably called the same in South Africa. But it's a small bayonet cap one. You can use an LED if you like, or you can use a regular one. The LED ones I think are better because they stay cooler and you've no risk of sort of the lens getting hot and maybe cracking or yellowing as they might do as they get older. Um, so yes, it is the same as I used in the 612. Also, just got a new Hoover about a month ago. It's cheap, lol. I think you guys have it, but it's called a Whirlwind and it's one of the base Hoover models. The one I have is a pet version called a Zoom Pet. It has an 1800 watt motor, though unlike the 700 watt Whirlwind. Also, I have a Dyson light ball. It's a good cleaner. Thanks for taking the time to do the advent vids. I look forward to them every day. Hope you have some more other random stuff coming on the Bits and Doings channel. Still wanna see how you used up the space in the loft at your mum's new house. Well, yes, um, I've started boarding up my mum's loft, but it went a bit uh, pear-shaped. So that's sort of on hold and it's been too cold for me to be up there. So I will be sort of updating everyone on that. But when it's all done and the vacuums are in, I'll probably feature that on this channel because it's more relevant to the viewers here than it is onto my, on my other channel. Um, right, that's it. Yes, I don't think there was much of a question, was there? Yes, I've answered the question about the bulb. So thanks, uh, Ratmo Gambo or Hayden. Brian, Briny or Bronny, is that Bronny T? Out of all the SIBO uprights, which one is your favourite? I'd have to say, for the performance aspect, uh, I'd say the SIBO Felix out of the uprights is my favourite. Adam Pope, when are you going to do the Henry Cordless demo? Well, I've no immediate plans to do a full demo of that. I did show it in action on my channel, and there's plenty of other demos on YouTube for that model and I don't think I'll add anything different to those demos at all so um, it's it might get looked at again but it's not a priority I've got other machines that have never featured yet that need to be done so it, you know I can't say I will definitely be doing anything but it probably will show be featured again next year Moa King Moa King says I collect vacuums well, shouldn't you be called Vacuum King, Vacuum King then? Perhaps you collect mowers as well. So, hello, Moa King, Moa King. Vacuum Man 107 by Tyler. Hi, Roger. Just wondering if you would recommend the Henry Cordless over the corded version. And if it's OK, could I please have a shout out? Thank you from Tyler. Hello, Tyler. Um, no, I wouldn't recommend the Henry Cordless over the corded model if you want something that's going to perform. The Henry Cordless is convenient, but it just doesn't have the suction power of the corded version, and it's a lot more money. It's still a good machine, and according to which magazine, they, they didn't give it Best Buy, but they, they rated it quite highly. It's good for what it is, but if, you, if it was a toss-up between the two, no, I would say go for a corded one. Thanks for your question. Joel Patton, if you had to sell all... Oh, one of these. If you had to sell all your vacuums, which one would you keep? Pick two vintage and three new. Well, I'm only allowed two vintage and three new ones. Right. Well, the two vintage then will be my junior that I got new in the box and the other 70s vacuum I got new in the box earlier this year which you haven't seen yet so I'll have to pick those and three new now you see if they're new to keep as a collection and I had some other vacuums to use you know there'd be a different answer oh heck three new right well two of them would be Sebo and Miele so I think I would pick the Sebo D4 premium as a cylinder then Probably the Miele upright, the S7 upright. So I've got a decent German-made upright and cylinder. And the third one, well, it would probably be a cordless. Um, 
Well, at the moment, I do like the Dyson Fluffy, but uh, I might be getting something a bit better than that. So ooh, it's hard to answer. A, it'll be a cordless. I don't know which. Thank you for your question. Right, next one, the vacuum and other things. If AO.com gave you a Bosch dishwasher with a cutlery tray, would you keep it? Well, um, what happens with AO.com is I tend to choose. I have not, I've not contacted them recently. I've been too busy, which is why I've not really, I don't know if they're still doing that anyway, but I could contact the lady at AO.com and say, have you got anything to review? And they normally send me a list of things. So I would get to pick it. And if there was a choice between a Bosch and a higher end Miele, I would go for the Miele. I like the Miele I bought myself, but the performance isn't, isn't fantastic to be quite honest. Um, so I possibly would keep it if it performed better than my current Miele and was quieter than my current Miele, then I probably would keep it. But I'd have to, I wouldn't want two dishwashers, so the Miele would have to go. But yes, it'd have to, it'd have to wash and dry better, it would have to be quieter, and then possibly I would. Gerald Braun, is that or Brown? Get a Filter Queen vacuum. I've answered that, Gerald. He's been on saying that on quite a lot of my other videos. So um, probably not. That's the worst thing you can do with me is keep bombarding me saying, get this, get that. Not a good idea if you want me to do something. I was worn down eventually by the Kirby, yes. But no plans at the moment. Can't say I never will, but no plans at the moment. David Ramshaw. Hey, I have a question. Do you think you would probably get another vintage vacuum? Well, how old is vintage? There is um, a debate. Alexa, how old does something have to be to be vintage? Hmm, I don't know that one. Well, see, Alexa doesn't know, does she? Alexa, you're useless. Sorry. Thanks for letting me know. It's a pleasure. Um, I will certainly be getting some older vacuums. If vintage means 70s, yes, I want to get some 70s vacuums, some 60s. I might even get some from the 30s. Well, yes, the answer is I probably will get another vintage vacuum, whatever vintage means. Just got to check my doobie. I'm just, I am recording. I don't have to do this all over again. I'm a bit wary of my... Um, the time I've only got 25 minutes on my card so I have to upload it to my computer and then carry on this is going to go on for more than 25 minutes right hello M A T T M M. I can't pronounce it but I think it's German for happy Christmas uh, Feliz Navidad Roger or is that Spanish you know it's Spanish because he's in, he's in Spain apologies to my German viewers um, I'm so glad my Spanish hotel has free Wi-Fi so I can still watch your advent series Amazon appeared to be selling a black Panasonic upright. I'm keeping my eye on it to see if it will decrease in price. Pardon me. It's £109. Just now, as you were saying on a previous video, it's sad to see them withdraw from the UK market. There's a Miele upright on Gumtree local to me and hope to buy it if it's still available when I get home. Thanks, Roger. Take care and hope is all well with Mum's house. Uh, kiss Thomas. Yeah, they actually had some of those Panasonic uprights in white. Co-op Electrical had some for about £80, and I nearly, nearly bought one. I thought, crikey, where's that come from? Um, the reviews are pretty poor for the, the model, though. I, dis I didn't buy it, and then it disappeared, so they couldn't have had many. So uh, by the time I've said this, somebody might be going onto Amazon to see if they can buy it. So you probably won't... Probably not the best thing to say. I certainly don't want one, but... Um, I've got a few Panasonics, but the older mo older models. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying your holiday in Spain, Thomas. Right, the Vax Mat. Hello, Ibizik. Um, just to say how lovely your channel is. So, you are amazing. It's lovely to watch. I have became a fan of Dyson's recently, as I can see you are too. I wouldn't say fan. Um, I'm looking out for a nice or new DC-49. Thank you again. Have a lovely Christmas for you and your family. Matty, 
Yeah, the, the DC-49 that uh, some of you caught a glimpse of in my bloopers video, I did buy that new, but it, it wasn't cheap. It was, you know, it wasn't extravagant, but it was, wasn't was um, cheap. But I did want one of those because it's tiny, tiny little thing. And of course, it's got the uh, digital motor. It's not very good uh, as a vacuum. I did a bit of a demo with it in the unboxing on hard floors and carpet, and it's... Mm, it's nice to have as a collection piece, but as a vacuum, not very good. I suppose it's an alternative to using the cordless, because I think a cordless uh, Dyson would be probably better. Uh, VacMat, the other question, what is your favourite bagless? Well, it'd have to be a Dyson. Um, I'd say D Dyson DC-15, I'll say. And again, that'll be coming up on my channel, I've got a new one of those. Thanks for your question. The Vac Mat, evil Vac Man, do you have a Mila upright? Do you not watch my videos? If so, do you feel like it better or worse than the canister vacuum? Yes, I have a one Mila upright, the X7, the silver model. Did a long, long review of that years ago. Um, I like it in ways it's a good machine. It's bulky, it's heavy, it picks up well. I like the hose because it's nice and long and it's pretty stable when you're using the tools because you, you lock the hose down and you can jiggle that hose about and the machine stays rock solid. So it's good for above floor. One of the better uprights I've used for above floor because of the fact it's so big and heavy. It just stays where it's put. Um, it's no better or worse than the canisters. That's all I'm going to say. It swings and roundabouts. They both have advantages and disadvantages. Sorry about that. I knew I was going to run out of memory. Okay, memory restored. On with the next question from Adam Stewardson. Merry Christmas, Roger. Do you still use your cordless, Henry? And if so, how do you get on with it? Well, I do use it, Adam, but mainly because it's out in my bedroom and I've, I've whipped around my bedroom with it a few times. I've used it when I've trimmed my beard to uh, suck up the whiskers. And I also use it to remove the dirt from bagless vacuums, just so I can keep all the dirt together. But I've not really used it all around the house, not for quite some time, because I do have other cordless models that I can whip around with that are a bit more convenient. It's a very good machine and good power for a cordless, but uh, obviously I have a lot more vacuums to use, so it's not one I grab to whip around with. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good machine. It's... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd rate it, but as I said, referring to my previous answer, if somebody was to say, would you get the cordless or the corded Henry, I'd have to say the corded if you're looking for something that's going to have a bit more performance. Thanks for your question, Adam. On to X-Man 1664. Question, if Mila sold the Blizzard with a powerhead in the UK like they do here in Canada, would you buy it? That's from Xavier. Yes, I would certainly buy any Mila powerhead machine, canister. We don't seem to get them here in the UK at the moment. They might relaunch them. Um, yes, I certainly would like to see one of those over here. I could get one imported from Germany because there is a model available in Germany, but it would be quite expensive. But yes, if it was available, an official UK version, I definitely would get it because I do like powerhead cylinder or canister machines. They're few and far between though in the UK. All right then, thanks for your question. Dimitri, hello Dimitri. Lift away, powerhead cylinder or upright. Merry Christmas everyone and look after yourself Roger. These advent videos must be doing your head in. Well, I've been not too bad so far. Fingers crossed, eh, Daisy? Um, I'm sure, I think you refer, are you referring to shark? Or, or are you referring to just, I don't know if you're referring to anything. Are you referring to just the shark brand or general any vacuum? Would I go for a lift away, a powerhead cylinder or upright? Right, well, if you're referring to, I think I would go for a lift away, to be honest. I do like that concept of the lift away, the powered lift away that is the best thing that shark have so far produced. What I don't like about the shark 
is the cyclonic efficiency it's pretty poor the filters get dirty pretty quick so if shark can develop that if they can produce a multi-cyclonic cleaner that's going to keep the filters a lot cleaner for longer and they also reduce the noise level then it would be pretty high up there in my estimation but I love the lift away feature it's fantastic the fact you can just press a button lift the canister off and just go straight under your low furniture with the powered head without having to disconnect in that respect it is far better than a Dyson because of the lift away aspect um, I do like it for that that's the best thing about shark so I will say a lift away Oh, I can't pronounce your surname. I won't embarrass myself or insult you, Rad, by trying to, but this is from Rad. Um, he, he lives in Poland and London, so it's so a bit of a commute for you, Rad. What are your earliest vacuum cleaner memories from your childhood? Saying hello from Poland slash London. Well, Rad, my earliest memories are probably similar to a lot of you folk watching. Um, I remember, of course, the vacuums my mum had, and I remember the vacuums my neighbours had, and family members. So, earliest memory would be my dad bringing home a McDonald electric upright vacuum in a sort of a box this big, just a brown box. Um, it was would have been sort of early 70s. He brought it home and it had to be assembled. That's my earliest memory. Um, this machine had, it was an orange base. It was, it was like an early OREC. So it had an orange motor base with a white um, flex, not flex, Daisy, you're putting me off, with a white bumper, a little white on-off switch and a gray cloth bag at the front. I used to love the smell that vacuum made. It had a distinctive smell. So that's my very earliest memory, I think. And then I remember dropping a vacuum cleaner down the stairs, a toy one, which is sort of a bit like a canister shape, really. And I think it had a see-through bit. I remember dropping down that down the stairs of the second house I lived in. Uh, I remember the neighbours, neighbour to one side, they had a Hoover Constellation, the neighbour over the road. It was either a Junior Deluxe or a Starlight. Um, I want to think another neighbour had a, a Junior, one of the green-fronted Juniors, an earlier Junior. So yeah, I'll say the earliest would be my dad bringing home the McDonald Electric 250 upright. Thanks for your question, Rad. Kia Forth, hello Kia. Hello, hope you're well. My question, what's the most surprising vacuum you have ever bought? E.g. you thought it was going to be rubbish, but turned out to be amazing. Happened to me recently, I got a Vax Dino Power from Asda. I got it cheaper, wink wink. Well, he probably stole it then, I think. I don't know what the wink's about. No, I know he got it cheaper. Yes, I know when you got it cheaper. He got it cheaper. It was only £30, and it's actually a really good vacuum. Well, probably, I have to say, I mean, it's hard to say the most surprising, but yeah, I've had some of those cheapo, cheap vacuums from Asda. The white Goblin, I can't remember, it was just called a Goblin Cylinder. The white one, I was pretty impressed with that for what I paid. Obviously, I don't know how it would perform, you know, long term, but when I used it, I've still got it, but when I used it in my demonstration, I thought, well, that's not, that's not bad for the money, you know, very, very cheap. So I'll, I'll say that, I, I, you know, I can't really think of, you know, it's like all these questions, what's your favourite, blah, blah. It's very hard to narrow it down, but I will say that, that goblin, the uh, red and white cylinder. Thanks for your question. Here, Connor Shannon, hi, I'm wondering what upright vacuum cleaner under £200 should I get to replace an ageing Nilfisk canister? Thanks for the lovely videos. Well, I've already thought about this, Connor, and it is a little bit over your budget, but personally, I would go for Sibo Felix. I think about the cheapest I've seen, I've seen a Felix Vogue, which is one of the colours I like. I do like that simplicity of the white and the grey. A Sibo Felix Vogue, you should It'll be a little bit over your budget. I've seen it for about £228. So if you can, you know, dip into your piggy bank a bit more for another £28, the SIBO Felix, it's a good vac, it's reliable. My mum still has one and it's, it must be about 12 years old or more that I bought her one Christmas. That still goes. So, yeah, if you want something reliable and bagged, 
that would be my choice, but it is a little bit over your budget. But you never know, the sales are coming up, you might get one for around 200. But it's worth paying the extra if you can stretch. Thanks. Thanks for your question, Connor. Um, Wally Castro, have we, have we spoken to Wally earlier? Oh, perhaps not. I thought I, I thought I already mentioned a Wally. Anyway, Wally says, I bought a Miele S8 Unique and all the controls on the handle stopped working. So I want to know what to get for my next vacuum. I have carpet and floors, thank you. Well, I don't know. Do you want an upright? Do you want a cylinder? I, I really can't narrow it down for you. I'm not sure where you live, um, whether you're in America. I like Milo as a brand, but I do find some of the some of the ones with the power head and the remote handle can be a little bit unreliable. Um, have you thought of a Cebo? A Cebo um, E3 Premium. That's pretty good. Or the uh, if you need a bigger vacuum with a, a longer flex and a bigger capacity, go for a D4 Premium. I think they're good. You might find it a bit more reliable than the Milo. Eric Patok, is that? Question, what was your very first vacuum? Well, I've answered that. Um, say total, Sensortronic Total System 5 is the first one I remember as a new vacuum. And what is now your favorite, if any? My favorites are my Kirby's, and that's Eric, is that from California? California, California. Eric, is that Eric? Eric Patok. Now, um, no, I haven't, I can't say Eric. Eric or Eric? I can't say. I say, I can't, I can't, you know, it's like asking a parent, what's your favourite child? You know, well, some people might say, say that, be able to answer, but I can't answer that. Sorry. But anyway. Hello, Joseph Rosamilia. I'm sure Joseph featured on my last Last year's Christmas video, I think you bought me something, Joseph. Was it that book? Did you buy me that book? I know it's, I'm, I'm, I'm naughty for not remembering, but I do, rem I know you, I'm sure you bought me something. Check back on last year's video, see what Joseph kindly sent me. I'm sure you did, Joseph. If you didn't, I apologise, and I apologise to whoever bought me the book, if it wasn't, <laughs> if it wasn't Joseph. Anyway, season's greetings, Roger. Um, I hope you've been enjoying your holiday season. Um, well, no, because I'm still working. We don't have a holiday season. Although this year I do have five days off in a row, which is amazing for me. Just the way it's fallen this year and uh, blah, blah. So anyway, I'm enjoying making the videos. It's hard work, but uh, it's okay. And I hope you lot are enjoying them as well. Uh, thank you so much for all the wonderful Advent videos. I was wondering, of all the vacuums you've received this past year, was there one you liked the best or was most impressed with? Either modern, vintage or one of each. Merry Christmas and have a wonderful new year. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, again, it's, it's trying to remember all the ones I've unboxed. Let's have a modern, oh dear, it's, it's difficult. And it's quite new and fresh in my head because it's a new one I've unboxed and it's just there because I've been using it. The Dyson Light Ball. Now look, I'm not a Dyson fanboy. I've been critical of Dyson in the past and I will be critical of Dyson in the future. But currently, my present feeling, I do like that light ball. It's got a few niggles about it, which I'll mention in a future video. But on the whole, I like that as a new modern vacuum and I would recommend it. So I'll have to say that. So um, that's no bias. I bought that myself. Um, that's my own opinion. Stop licking, Daisy May. And vintage. Probably, again, it's one that you will see next year that I unboxed. I was pleased to get a new in the box. It's not the most exciting of vacuums, but it's one I've wanted to complete a collection, my collection, well, part of a collection. So um, everyone will have to stay tuned and find out what that video uh, vacuum is. Anyway, thanks for your um, question, Joseph. Next question, Adrian Worthington. Can I have a shout out? Hello, Adrian, yay! Was that good enough? Can I have a shout out? Yes, tick. And also, what Dyson would you suggest I get? I am thinking about the V8 or the V6. Well, right, if it's between those two, I've only got experience of the V6. Um, 
pretty good, but a lot of people do swear by the V8. So if you can run to the bit more money a V8 will cost, don't buy them now because they've gone right up in price again. Wait until they're on offer. Out of those two, I would say the V8. Okay, thanks for your question, Adrian. Next is GTA 5 Mater 2014. Can you do a head-to-head -head video, Dyson DC40 versus Dyson Light Ball? I like your channel, by the way. I might do a Dyson comparison. Um, probably will do a one against the Light Ball, but possibly not the DC40. I have a feeling I might be getting some other Dyson uprights. Um, so who knows? I might do a triple or even a quadruple. Hey, how would you like that? I could do four Dyson uprights that are currently available, but some are discontinued, but you can still buy them all. I could do all four in a row. And to be quite honest, spoiler alert, I think the light ball will probably score the best for most things. So yes, that's something for the future. So thanks for your question. Uh, Skits Mommy. I like the Santa. He's Lego man. Oh, he's, I'll just get him for you. Hang on. Come on. He's here. It's almost as big as a small child. Oh, ick. That nearly went for... Let me just bend him. He's... Uh, oh, heck. That was a bit vigorous. His trim's coming off. Uh, sorry, Molly. Molly doesn't like that noise. Um, it's a, actually, it isn't Lego. This is Playmobil. This is a giant Playmobil. Exactly like a small Playmobil person. And I mean, the small figures, you know, like that. Um, yeah, so it's not, not Lego based, it's Playmobil. So anyway, I like the Santa, he's Lego Man style. I know you periodically pick up models you've had previously owned in the past. How did you typically get rid of them? And I'm referring to the days before eBay and the like. Well, I can't sit with Santa, it looks a bit creepy, doesn't it? I'll put him down there. Um, previously, I got rid of them, and oh, it's bringing back terrible, terrible, painful memories. But um, during my purge, I got rid of them via the local paper. You could advertise stuff for free. So I would put what it was, had to put my phone number. People would ring up saying, is it still for sale? And I'd say, no, it's sold. I'd say, yes, it is, come round. And I would sell it that way. Um, and often I used to sell more than one because sometimes safety in numbers, if it was a woman who wanted it, she'd come with a friend, you know, in case I was a mass murderer or something. I was obviously still living with my mum and dad. Um, so, you know, they were quite safe. But um, I would often sell another vacuum to a friend or once, once the person's bought one, they would tell another friend and, you know, so it's, it spiralled from there. So they went for a song, a lot of them went for stupidly ridiculous cheap prices. But I was just wanted rid of them at that stage. If I had them now, some of the models, and they, oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. I sold a few to uh, a Radio York, um, Radio York presenter called David Dunning. There's um, a thing about him on my channel. There's other stuff about David Dunning when he was on Noel Addicts and other programs. I don't think he's into vacuums anymore. He bought a few off me. Um, and people at work as well. So that's basically how I got rid. And the odd relative had one off me, you know. So that's how I did it. And I, I still regret it to the day. Now, thanks, uh, Skits Mommy. Amstech, Amistech 1995. Question, will you be getting a Dyson DC01? Thanks. All I'll say to you is, Mm, stay tuned. Stay tuned to this channel and your question will be answered. Not saying yes or no. I think you know it could be a yes. Mm. But that's all I'm saying, folks. Right. Hey, thanks for your question. Caleb. Nuds, Nuds, Nudsden, is that? Nudsden, Nudsden. Is that silent K? Caleb Nuds Nuzden, I think. I think that's correct. Uh, when will you make a demo video? Oh, sorry. When you make a demo video, how long does it take you to make it from start to finish? And how do you decide what vacuum cleaner you're going to demo? I've, 
I've never really timed it, but it could be the best part of a day. You know, like my day off work, I could be more or less doing for the whole day. Now that includes everything, setting it all up, setting my lights up, setting up the demos, filming everything, cleaning up afterwards, then taking my um, SD card, popping it into my computer and editing all the footage and then uploading it, rendering it, then uploading it. So, you know, it can be for a big demo, the best part of the day to do that. How do I choose? Well, I tend to try, I have been a bit bad at this last few months, but I tend to try um, and video a demo of one I've unboxed earliest. So I look through the unboxing videos and think, right, I unboxed that X number of months slash years ago, I better make a demo of that. So there's no real rhyme or reason. I just try and demo ones that you've seen. But if I've been given one from a retailer or manufacturer, then that takes priority, obviously, because they want to see, you know, if they've given me a vacuum for free, they want me to do it pretty quick. So that always takes priority. If I've got a free um, sample, then that would go before I do anything else. So thanks for your question. Scott Martin, how many pneumatic George have you had in the post? I think you mean past. Um, I don't know, possibly five. I've still got the, the latest, latest one I unboxed. I've still got that. The one I unboxed before that was faulty. It's four or five, because I've had them and they take up so much room, I've ended up selling them, but I, I, I plan to keep the one I've got now. Um, and you've asked that question four times, but I've, I'll only answer it once. So thanks for your question, Martin. Four or five is my answer. And they've all been slightly different, but they looked the same. Hello, Louise. Louise, a big shark fan. Hello, Roger. I'm loving these advent videos. Thank you. There is something I've been curious about from each brand of vacuum. What, which vacuum is your favourite and which is the worst in your expert opinion? Ooh. You see, I can't answer that. I've been trying to answer. Well, you're saying brand, aren't you? Are you saying brand? Are oh, you saying brand? Mm. Well, it's German. You see, if you were talking vintage and, you know, I can say definitely, without shadow of doubt, my favourite vintage brand is Hoover. Not now, sadly vintage because hoover is the brand i grew up with and and you know really was obsessed about when i was a child so hoover without shadow of a doubt and i've still got soft spot for hoover but i just don't think their current output is very good but they might you know they might surprise me with something better um so i would say i, I will say sibo for the modern brand because Right, they're not the, the most exciting vacuum and they're not always the best performing, but they do remind me of decent Hoover, if you know what I mean. So um, they are still well made, better made than Miele, in my opinion and experience. Um, they're reliable. They're just sort of, you know, they are quality vacuum and they do hark back to an, an era where va all vacuums were of decent quality. So I will say SIBO, but they're not the most innovative brand. And I don't know who runs SIBO, but they don't seem to be a brand that really want to make money. I know it sounds odd, but they don't seem... Ooh. To make calls, first register in Excuse your Excuse me, Alexa. shut up Alexa. I didn't even say Alexa. Sorry about that, interrupting. Um, what was I saying? She's, oh, she's made me go all funny. Right, yeah, SIBO don't seem to be that keen on making money. I don't know. That's the impression I get, because you can't buy them everywhere. I know, oh, yes, they're trying to be exclusive, but they're not going to make money, and, you know, they probably make enough. They're probably quite happy with how much money they make, but I just think they're missing a trick. Why, why aren't SIBO on, on a name that everyone knows about? Because not a lot of people have heard of SIBO. But anyway, you see, not a lot of people heard about Shark. But Shark have really been out there pushing their name out on TV, on social media. So most people have heard of Shark and they're a pretty new brand in the UK. You ask about SIBO, 
to many people in the UK. You ask 100 people what SIBO is, they well, I'd say 80 to 90 percent wouldn't have even heard of them. Doesn't mean to say they're not a good brand, but I just think they could be pushing them, pushing themselves forward a bit more. But anyway, I have nothing to do with what uh, they do business-wise. Thanks, Louise, for your question. Moon Zhao, here's my question. If you had to get rid of every vacuum cleaner, you... Oh, it's the same question. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You, you folks should have read the questions before you've asked yours. I know it's, it's easy just to think of a question. Let me see. Is this, is this slightly different? Can I answer it any differently? Um, if you had to get rid of every vacuum cleaner you own except for one, which vacuum would you keep? Um, right, well, I'd have to keep... If I only had one vacuum, it would have to be a vacuum that I would use, wouldn't it? Because I'd need one vacuum to clean the house. So it's either going to be a very good upright mains powered up by or a very good mains powered cylinder and I think I'll have to veer towards a cylinder um, because I want the versatility of being able to do all my knickknacks as well as um, a, I think it'll have to be a power head cylinder so in my current situation I will have to say the SIBO E3 Premium so SIBO is still getting a lot of plugs aren't they <sighs> right hello Glyn Glyn Roberts I don't know if Glyn's in hospital. He was going to hospital, poor man, over Christmas. Not very nice to go in hospital any time of year, is it? Certainly not over Christmas. Anyway, I hope you're out or, or whatever you've been in for, you're getting better, Glyn. Anyway, Glyn says, after making all these videos, Roger, don't you think every day should be just like Christmas? No, no way. How awful would that be? That song, I hate that song, Wizard. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Absolutely. Why? No, you wouldn't want it to be Christmas because if it's this, if it's Christmas every day, it's normal, isn't it? Every day you wouldn't have a, a great big tree, you know. Well, you would. You'd have a, you'd have a Christmas tree up all the time, you know. You'd imagine having to dust that all the time, and you'd be buying presents for people all the time. You'd be stuffing your face with mince pies and Christmas pud. I don't like either of those things. Quality Street, Roses, people will be walking around like really obese, skint because they've had to spend all their money every day on presents, having to put up with carol singers, the shop's too busy, cold weather. No, no, who would? Who would want, who would want Christmas every day? It's nice, I like Christmas, but keep it, you know, because I like, I like the build up to Christmas. Um, and the inevitable disappointments. Um, but then when, when sort of Christmas is over and Boxing Day is over, I'm just wanting everything to get back to normal. I'm wanting, you know, the post to get back to normal, the shops to be normal, working hours. So I sort of look forward to the sort of the second week in January when things are back to normal and have quietened down. Oh dear, sorry about that blip. I've again run out of space. So what I think I'll have to do, because this video... I don't know if I'm even halfway through your questions. I think I'll end it now and um, well, there'll have to be a part two. So sorry if you've not been mentioned in this. Ho hopefully you're not cursing me because you've been waiting for your question. I'll get to you in the next video. I'm hoping it doesn't run to three. I'll have to try and speed up my <laughs> responses. So thanks for watching part one. It's going to go into part two now. So um, just thank you to my last commenter, Glyn. So, yes, I think we've established, no, I don't think it should be Christmas every day. So let's just whiz back to say um, hello again to everyone I've spoken to. So hello, Grumpy Man Reviews. Hello, Ollie Vat Guy. Hello, DJ Vids. Hello, Jank Naj, is that? <laughs> I hope that's right. Hello, Chris E. Hello, Alex Doherty. Doherty, Doherty. Oh, yes, I have spoken to Wally. Wally. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello. Hello, Ratmo Gambo. Hello, Bonnie T. Adam Pope. Moaking, Moaking. Vacuum Man 107 by Tyler. Joel Patton. The Vacuum and Other Things. Gerald Braun or Brown. David Ramshaw. M A T T M M. Thomas. The Vac Matt. Evil Vac Man. Adam, Adam Stewartson. 
X-Man 1664, Dimitri, can't pronounce his surname, sorry, Jim Dimitri, Rad, Kia, Connor, Shannon, uh, Wally again, Eric, uh, Joseph, Adrian, GTA 5 Mater 2014, Skits, Mommy, Amistek 1995, Caleb, Scott, Louise, Moon, Zhao, and then finally, Glyn. Tomorrow's video will start with a question from Jeremiah Johnson. Thanks for watching. Tune in for part two tomorrow. See you all soon. Bye for now.